Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Let xn be a sequence of real numbers, let x be a real number, and let an be a sequence of positive real numbers that converges to zero. If there exists a positive real number c and a positive integer n, such that the absolute value of xn minus x is less than or equal to c a n for all positive integers n greater than or equal to m, then xn converges to x. Now, xn refers to the sequence x1, x2, x3, and so on and so forth. an refers to the sequence a1, a2, a3, and so on and so forth. Now, intuitively, this makes sense, because, as you can imagine, since an converges to zero, can will also converge to zero. And if we consider a really large value for n, then can will be essentially zero. And since the difference between xn minus x is less than or equal to can, which is essentially zero, this tells us that the difference between xn and x will be essentially zero. And so we should expect xn to converge to x. Okay, now before we get into the proof, I would first like to clarify what these two statements mean. Now, by definition of the limit of a sequence, to say that a n converges to zero means that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer k such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of a n minus zero is less than epsilon. And since a n is a sequence of positive real numbers, this is the same thing as saying a n is less than epsilon. Similarly, to say that xn converges to x means that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer k, such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of xn minus x is less than epsilon. Okay, now let's get into the proof. Now to start out, let's suppose we're already given a sequence xn, a real number x, and a sequence of positive real numbers a n that converges to zero, right? And let's also suppose we already have a positive real number c and a positive integer m, which satisfies this inequality for all positive integers n greater than or equal to m. Our whole goal is to prove that xn converges to x. So really the whole goal in this proof is to prove this statement. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, give me an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. And from here, we want to find a positive integer which makes this statement turn out true. Well then, let me note, since c is greater than zero, it follows that epsilon over c is greater than zero. And then, since we know a n converges to zero, this means we are given that this first statement is true. And really, this statement works for every positive real number, so it must work for the positive real number epsilon over c that we have in our proof. So let's take this epsilon to be epsilon over c. If we do that, then it follows that there is some positive integer, I'll call it p, which satisfies for all positive integers n greater than or equal to p, a n is less than epsilon over c. Now remember, our goal is to find a positive integer which makes this statement turn out true. And we're going to show that the larger of p and m will make this turn out true. So let's take k to be the supremum of p and m. With this choice of k, we're going to show that this is true. So we're trying to prove a statement about every positive integer greater than or equal to k, so give me an arbitrary positive integer greater than or equal to k. I'll call it n. From here, we want to show that this is true. Now to start, we know that k is greater than or equal to m. And since n is greater than or equal to k, and k is greater than or equal to m, that tells us that n is greater than or equal to m. But we know that this is true 
for all positive integers greater than or equal to m. Well, since it's true for every positive integer greater than or equal to m, it surely must be true for n. So if we take the n here to be the n we have in our proof, it follows that this is true. And also, we know that k is greater than or equal to p. And since n is greater than or equal to k, and k is greater than or equal to p, that tells us that n is greater than or equal to p. But we know from earlier that for all positive integers greater than or equal to p, that this is true. So we can take n here to be the n we have in our proof, and we will have that this is true. But if we take c and multiply it on both sides of this inequality, we get that can is less than epsilon. And putting this together now, we see that the absolute value of x and minus x is less than or equal to can, which is less than epsilon. So these two inequalities tell us that the absolute value of x and minus x is less than epsilon. So now let's put this together. We see that under the assumption n is greater than or equal to k, it follows that the absolute value of xn minus x is less than epsilon. Since n was arbitrary, this means we have shown for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of xn minus x is less than epsilon. So we have found a positive integer which makes this turn out true, right? Namely, this positive integer makes it work. So we have shown that this is true, right? And we showed that this was true under the assumption of some arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. And since epsilon was arbitrary, this means we have shown for all epsilon greater than zero, this is true. So we've proven this entire statement, which amounts to proving that xn converges to x. And that was what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.